The Brian Tilsley Toolbox contains everything you need to be a successful motor mechanic on Coronation Street. The Brian Tilsley Toolbox and the companion Gail Tilsley Toolbox. Now you can look just like Brian and Gail. This amazing offer is in this week's Celebrity Chat. on your mind. We need to know what's happening. No one's told us what's going on. Yeah, I mean, we're six minutes into the program and we still don't have a storyline. So? Well, we just thought it might be more interesting if we... Oh, shoot. What's the matter? I got the titles coming right up over my face again. When are you guys gonna stop complaining? I got the director's name over my face. You don't hear me moaning, do you? Can, can, can we get on with it? Oh, it's all right for you. You never get any names across your face. Oh, Sprock, it's right. Let's get on with it. Captain, here's that file you asked for. Can we get on with the important stuff? Sure. You get to fire 500 rounds without reloading, you run across eight car parks without getting shot at, and you wreck six cars without getting a scratch. No, 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 the important stuff. Like, what clothes we wear? Well, you got 10 changes throughout the program. All designer labels? Natural. Well, you have to sit there in the same filthy suit. I gotta make you guys look good. Yeah, what about the music? Well, we got six new tracks. There's uh, Phil Collins, Madonna, U2, Huey Lewis, and Brian Adams for the car chase. Oh, no, Brian Adams is for fight. You know, when I get smacked into that pile of cardboard boxes, yeah. you know as well as I do, car chases is Phil Collins and the Eurythmics. But we don't have I've known Eurythmics this week. What? Get my agent on the phone. Captain, here's that file you asked for. <laughs> you haven't even told us what the goddamn plot is. Nobody's interested in the plot. <laughs> when are you guys gonna understand that the boss cars, the clothes, the music, the lavish sets this makes this program? You get a couple of cops in the middle of everything and the series can't fail. Yeah, like Carthy and Hutch, Agni and Lacey. Exactly. But more up to date. But surely, if we're going to be more up to date, we need a flash car or a, a flash helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We're not talking Knight Rider or an Airwolf here. This is reality. Captain, <laughs> here's that file you asked for. <laughs> surely we need some kind of a plot. No, of course not. You got your love interest, you got your car chases. You got your blazing ride between you two and me, and you got your shootout down at the docks, and then we all come back here and sit around the coffee machine, and we're all friends at the end. I mean, we only got an hour. There's no time for a goddamn story. Good job. That's okay. But I don't believe it. They'll be running those captions till the end of the program. At least put it on the honky for a change. Thanks. Okay, Captain. Come on. We better get moving. There's no rush, fellas. Why is that? They're just bringing up the first lot of commercials. I don't believe it. It's on me again. <laughs> Brian. Hello, J.G. Love. What are you doing here? Well, I, I missed you at Stringfellow, so I thought you'd be here. Actually, I wondered if I could talk to you. Ken's stuck at home having a family reunion with the wardrobe. All right, well, sit yourself down, Deirdre. I could do with some company. I'm supposed to meet Gail here, like, but she's been delayed at cafe. Apparently, the deep fat fry spilt all over the floor. Yeah, she's got to stay behind and mop it up with her face. What? 
You mean Gail's rubbing her face and all that filthy grease and fat? Aye. You know Gail, Deidre. She won't let an old beauty trick like that slip her by. Oh, actually, Bran, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Well, go ahead, Dreary. I'm all ears. And teeth. Well, it's me air, Brian. I can't seem to do a thing with it. Have you tried involuntary manslaughter? I thought maybe you could do something. You know, at the garage. Sorry, Deadly. We don't touch write-offs. It's not a write-off, Brian. I just thought maybe you and Kevin could give it a bit of a service, that's all. What kind of a service? What sort do you do? Funeral service. I'll give you a broken nose in a minute. Why? Don't you need it anymore, love? Can't you just give it an oil change, then? Sorry, Drippy. No can do. Then you won't help. Look, Droopy, I'd love to help you, love, but, like, nothing gives me more pleasure than taking on lost causes. But it's just not on. If I help you, I'll have to help everyone else, won't I? It's just the thin end of the wedge. Or, in your case, the back end of a bus. <laughs> Can't I change your mind? Sorry, Deidre. Oh, Weck. Well, what am I to do now? You could take your ear down to Jack Duckworth's. Jack Duckworth's? Why? He's looking for a new chamois to do his window cleaning. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Junk in the USA. And I hope you're ready to react to a riveting recording of my recent reception when I confronted a famous actor who has received worldwide respect and who was recognised as a really renowned and radical performer with a reputation of rendering a remarkable range of roles in her repertoire. I'm talking, of course, about Meryl Streep. Now, Meryl, I know you've won one or two Oscars, but what are all these for? Well, I always win. So the Academy thought it'd be best all round if they just gave me the next 35 years' worth. Yes, but they're all identical. So are my performances. Now, you've got a bit of a reputation of being, shall we say, difficult to work with. <laughs> difficult? Me? Oh, Jonathan, you've got to be kidding. I mean, once they put me on a set with these terrible people, they were emoting and inflecting and acting. It was awful. Is that so bad? Well... I've never done it, and I've won all these Oscars. <laughs> Moving on, as we may, to your latest film, entitled Plenty, I believe you're starring opposite one of our very own British talents. Oh, uh, you mean Stink? Uh, surely you mean Stink. <laughs> you haven't seen his performance. <laughs> well, there again, it was his first film. Uh, no, but surely he was in Brimstone and Tweakle, Dune and The Bride. I'm sorry, I didn't see them. Who did? Meryl Street, thank you. Sure. Well, that's all from Junk in the USA. Next week, I'll be interviewing Robert Whitford about his whip roaring and ribald role in his really wisest <laughs> recent release, Butch Casserole and the Bloke with the Orange Hair. In this week's Celebrity Chat, we talk to Felicity Kendall, the Sloan Ranger's answer to Molly Sugden. No matter how famous her face becomes, she always ends up at the bottom. Well, I'm so scatterbrained, I really am. I do get annoyed with myself. I mean, for instance, a Jehovah's Witness came round the other day and said, would I come to their end of the world meeting? And I said, could you come back next year? <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> no, I try and be organised. It always backfires, though. I mean, for instance, I sent off for this household gadget that cuts housework in half. I sent off for two of them, I think. <laughs> and then someone gave me two tickets for live from Her Majesty's. I spent two hours queuing in the rain outside Buckingham Palace. Oh. 